This is Adventist World Radio broadcasting in English from Pune. Hello and a warm welcome to you as you join us. In our program today, we bring music from heritage singers and Jody and Lori Nadashenko. A nature study on useful plants. We also have a special message from God's Word on the topic, Are You Asking Enough? This is your host, Maureen. I'm Sharan. And you are listening to Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. Let's begin our program with a song by the heritage singers entitled, Someone is Praying for You. You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope for all. Come join us as Nilima shares a nature study on useful plants. 
Dear listeners, I am happy to share a nature study on useful plants. There are many useful plants and trees that God created for man. In the warmer climates of the world, including the southern United States, a large amount of cotton is grown. The early settlers on this planet soon discovered the cotton plant and they took the fiber from the cotton ball and began to twirl it and make it into thread. From the thread, they wove cotton. I have watched the Indian girls and women in Brazil and Peru as they spin the cotton and make their thread. They make very beautiful garments and other things from the cotton that they spin. What would we do without rubber? The rubber trees in Central and South America, Southeast Asia and Africa do much to improve our world. In South America, the trees are sliced with a sharp knife and the liquid latex runs down the cut channels into containers. To take this latex does not hurt the tree. It is evidently a substance that protects the tree from injury. After the latex is gathered, it is wrapped into a stick and barbecued like meat over an open fire until it becomes a large ball. These balls are carried by men to the river bank and from there they are taken by canoe or boat to the rubber peddlers who ship them to rubber products companies. Another kind of latex that many of you enjoy is the chewing gum latex, which is gathered just like the rubber latex. After the chewing gum latex is gathered, it is brought into processing plant, cleaned, formed into large blocks and shipped to the chewing gum manufacturers. Raw latex has no taste. Dear listeners, I thank God that He gave us so many interesting plants to get products from and that He gave man the intelligence to be able to develop these products. Thank God today for your brain and the ability to think. Thank you, Nilima, for a nice nature study on useful plants. The Bible in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, it says, The winter is over. The rains have stopped. In the countryside, the flowers are in bloom. This is the time for singing. The song of doves is heard in the fields. Figs are beginning to ripen. The air is fragrant with blossoming vines. Come then, my love, my darling, come with me. Dear listener, may God bless us as we use our talents and our lives in sharing God's love to people around us. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If God made you a teacher, be a teacher. Study diligently and do your best. If He has given you a gift of mercy, serve cheerfully and don't expect others to do what you can. Accept your spiritual gifts. Cultivate your capabilities. Stop comparing. Enjoy being you. Yes, use what you have. Indeed, do what you can where you are with what you have. To learn more, you are welcome to write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune 411-001, Maharashtra, India. You could also visit us on our website, www.awr.org. Before you hear God's Word, here's a song by Jody and Loni Malashenko. He came to me. He 
Listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope for all. And now to share God's word, we have Pastor Dan Oxberger, who will present the message entitled, Are You Asking Enough? Dear listener, are you asking enough? Solomon was one of the wisest kings that ever lived. He was also a greatly blessed and very prosperous king. And not many people know why he was so prosperous. Reading from 1 Kings 3, 11 to 14, it says, Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, 
nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you both a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before, nor shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So, if you walk in my ways, and keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Dear listener, Solomon had been installed on David's throne and was ready to enjoy great success. He had dealt with enemies from the past. He'd signed a treaty with Pharaoh and was spiritually active. God was with him. In many ways, he had everything a person could want. But God wanted him to ask for more blessings. So God came to him by way of a dream. God, listen, initiated the conversation and encouraged him to make a request. There were no conditions, no suggestions as to what might be requested, just a blanket offer. Solomon, who was humble in his own sight at the time, made one request. He asked for an understanding heart so that he might judge his people and discern between good and evil. Solomon could have asked for wealth, honor, victory over his enemies, anything, but he asked for wisdom. God responded by not only giving him wisdom, but also what he had not asked for, both riches and honor. Dear listener, we know the rest of the story, for God blessed him abundantly. God also mentioned the need to continue walking in his ways, statutes, and commands. Here are some things that strike me. First of all, God wants to bless us more. God came to Solomon. He heard and made a serious request. Isn't God making the same offer to us in Matthew 7, 7 and 8 and innumerable other promises? Why are we not making more serious requests? Secondly, God comes to us when we are imperfect. Solomon was not perfect when God came to him. God could have ruled him out, but God was faithful to his promise to David his father. God wants to do a great work in our lives too. It will be life-changing when he does. Third, we can always ask for more, should ask for more. Solomon was king and had everything going for him. But there were more blessings that God wanted to render. I wonder, are there blessings that are waiting for you, my listener today? God's blessings are unavailable unless we ask. Solomon's greatest blessings required his asking. Fifth, we must not only ask, we must ask wisely. Solomon could have wasted his breath on a limited or unwise prayer and would have obtained a limited or negative outcome. Yes, God answers prayers negatively sometimes when giving our request would hurt us. Because he asked the better prayer, the windows of heaven opened upon his life and kingdom and blessings were poured out that are still being spoken of in our day. We need to not only make requests, but make life-changing, kingdom-advancing requests. The windows of heaven will also be opened in our lives. Finally, we must not forget the one who gave the gifts and his commands and live in such a way that the blessings are lost. Solomon was given wise admonition from a loving God. He unfortunately later forgot and therefore had unnecessary frustrations and disappointments and sullied what should have been a perfect reputation. And so I ask in closing, are you obtaining all the blessings that God wants to grant? I hope, listener, you will continue asking like Solomon and enjoy the blessings that only God can bring. But remember, those blessings must be used in a godly and God-honoring way. Otherwise, the outcome will be sad, as it was for Solomon. Dear Father in Heaven, It amazes me that in Solomon's case, he wasn't even asking when you came to him and said, What is it that you want? You invited him to ask more. He asked wisely, and you not only gave him wisdom, but riches and honor. Father in Heaven, listening to this broadcast are hundreds of people who perhaps have great needs in their lives and perhaps are feeling shy or, or intimidated as to whether they have a right to ask more. Yet your promise in Matthew 7 and 7 and 8 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. O oh, Father, encourage my listeners to ask. Ask specifically. Ask expectantly. 
surprise them with your generosity. And might they give you praise and honor, Father, for what you've done. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dan Oxberger, for sharing God's Word. We are sure our listeners enjoyed it. And not only that, but have benefited from our program as well. Many times we tend to forget God. The Bible warns us against forgetting the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 11 to 16 says, Make sure that you do not forget the Lord your God. Do not fail to obey any of His laws that I am giving you today. When you have all you want to eat and have built good houses to live in, and when your cattle and sheep, your silver and gold, and your other possessions have increased, make sure that you do not become proud and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from Egypt, where you were slaves. He led you through that vast and terrifying desert where there were poisonous snakes and scorpions. In that dry and waterless land, he made water flow out of solid rock for you. In the desert, he gave you manna to eat, food that your ancestors had never eaten. He sent hardships on you to test you, so that in the end, he could bless you with good things. Dear friend, I see a lot of people forgetting as they get older. For example, elderly person moving out to get sugar from the store, but as he moves out of the house, he forgets what he's been told to get. That's definitely called amnesia or loss of memory. Dear friend, forgetfulness happens to all of us. And while our occasional lapses may be amusing or annoying, a lack of memory towards God can be disastrous. With the people of Israel poised to enter the promised land, Moses challenged them to remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these forty years in the wilderness, and to be aware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments. Forgetting God can spring from testing. Verses 2-4 to four. God allowed His people to hunger and then provided manna. When we lack the necessities of life, it's easy to feel that God has somehow forgotten us. Secondly, satisfaction. Verses 10 and 11. Abundance or need may produce spiritual amnesia because both cause to focus on ourselves, not on God who provides. Thirdly, dear listener, pride. Verses 12 to 16. If prosperity brings a feeling of self-accomplishment, then we have forgotten God. Dear listener, humility, obedience and praise helps us remember God's faithful provision and care. Let's not forget to thank Him today for all He's done. Dear friends, as we heard today, let's ask enough for Jesus, but never let the abundance of God's gifts cause you to forget the giver. With this, we have almost come to the end of our broadcast. We believe that you've benefited from our program. To learn more, you're welcome to write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box number 17, Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. That's Adventist World Radio, Post Box number 17, Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. Yeah. You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl.com. That's amc3 at vsnl.com. I'm Sharad, your host. And I'm Maureen, signing out from Adventist World Radio. Do join us again along with your family and friends. Until then, we wish you God's richest blessings. Goodbye.
See you. 